Hi, I'm Jonathan Portis. I'm sorry I can't be there this morning, but uh, we agreed that I do a quick uh, videotape so I can give my views on the material you'll be seeing this morning. It's very interesting to see how the recession uh, is impacting consumer perceptions and consumer behavior. Uh, we don't know yet the extent to which these are short-term as opposed to more long-term trends. Um, on the one hand, a shift towards greater saving is actually what the UK economy needs over the longer term. Uh, but in the short term, it's probably going to make recovery somewhat more difficult. I think in the short term, clearly, more saving means lower demand. Uh, and the main problem for the UK economy, as I and a number of others have been saying for at least the, uh, the last 18 months or so, is depressed demand. So in the short term, uh, greater consumer saving, higher risk aversion, more willingness to pay down mortgages, say, um, is probably going to be bad in the short term for the macroeconomy and indeed for the Treasury in terms of reducing the deficit. Um, of course, over the longer term, um, the UK actually has a problem of not saving enough and the government's quite right in saying that we do need to rebalance the economy away from so much consumer spending towards saving um, and towards investment. Um, so over the medium to longer term, um, a more realistic assessment on the part of consumers of what they can afford not just today but uh, um, over their life cycles um, could potentially be quite good for the economy. It could um, boost saving, increase provision for retirement, mean fewer people getting into trouble with debt and making the next uh, economic cycle not quite as violent as the last one. So there's a real trade-off here I think for policy. You know, Policy needs to support demand in the short term. Uh, which, as I say, is why I and a number of other economists have been arguing for some time that the government's policies, which could have been designed to uh, uh, restrict consumer demand, um, are quite damaging uh, in the short term. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't want to say, actually, the only way that, that what we need to get out of our, the crisis now and to, to go forward is just more spending on its own. That, that won't be enough. We do need to rebalance towards saving over the medium term. So it's quite a difficult balance for policymakers, and that obviously will impact how, how businesses decide uh, what their strategies are going to be going forward. I think it's quite interesting that actually in this recession, um, of course, unemployment has not been nearly as serious as uh, in the previous two recessions, those in the uh, early 90s um, and the late 70s, early 80s. Yet at the same time, the fear of unemployment uh, is clearly very high and that's weighing quite heavily on consumers and hence on spending. Now, of course, at this point in the economic cycle, governments of whatever persuasion always go on about how the media, it's all the media's fault because they're talking the economy down. And I do think that there was an unfortunate impact of, of conf on confidence from, frankly, what was um, irresponsible scaremongering about what was a very serious budget deficit but not a crisis and not an emergency. Um, so I do think that that has had some lasting effect and is accounting for some of the persistent gloom on the part of consumers. Um, but going forward, I don't think that, frankly, that there's much that either government or media should do. You can't talk people into economic optimism. Um, people, on the whole, make reasonably rational decisions based on their, their perceptions of their own circumstances. Um, government uh, and policymakers just need to get on with doing the things that are necessary to get, get us out of this recession, um, which means uh, um, supporting demand in the short term and over the medium term, uh, reducing the budget deficit and rebalancing the economy um, away from too much spending. Uh, consumer spending and towards exports and investment. Uh, so that, that I think are the, the macro policy implications. In terms of, of individual families and groups, I think one thing which our research has shown is that, um, as of course everyone knows, there was a huge rise in inequality um, in, the, uh, in the UK um, over the period, say, about from the mid-1970s to the mid-1990s. Um, and then since then, inequality has been roughly stable, but still at a very high level. And what we saw in the last 10 years, especially during the uh, um, consumer, so, uh, the, uh, what was that rising consumer spending for the less well-off 
was supported to a very large extent by borrowing and credit. Um, and that had malign effects both for the individuals and families concerned who couldn't necessarily afford what they were spending given their incomes and for the economy as a whole because it made things more unstable and made us more vulnerable when the crash came. And so I think there's a real imperative for the medium term as well as the things I've just mentioned to do something about persistent income inequality. If we want part of rebalancing should be about rebalancing incomes so that people in the bottom and middle of the income distribution can actually afford uh, to buy the things they want, not buy them on credit. I think it's important to remember that the UK economy looked at over the long term, say the last 30 years, has actually done pretty well. In per capita GDP terms, we've outperformed Germany, France, the US. Um, that's something we should be quite pleased about. And we have some big strengths. Um, there are some sectors we do, we do very well at. I mean, in particular, internationally traded service sectors, uh, some of those, not just the financial sector, we're very successful at. We're very good at business services. Um, we're very good at higher education, despite the government's attempts to uh, stifle the sector by uh, restricting uh, foreign students. Um, we're very good at the creative industries. We're good at some niche uh, areas of high-tech manufacturing. Um, all of those are likely to be growth areas um, in the world economy going forward and there are things that we're good at and we can be successful um, uh, going forward um, if we put in place the right uh, environment, government and business to take advantage of those growth opportunities.